Good afternoon, YouTubers. T Square with T Square Talk. I hope everybody's having a great morning. It is Monday morning. Uh, always rough on Monday mornings um, just to get up early after the long weekend. Probably everybody stayed up late last night watching football. And just me, I've just been making videos and doing a lot of reading, uh, precious metals, and, and trying to keep up with the comments. Um, so I got to thank everybody. Thank you so much for all the great comments you guys left me. I, I literally um, put together my videos off kind of comments. Uh, it helps me uh, focus on what people are thinking, what's going on, and your thumbs up that you guys have been giving me have been awesome. So thank you so much for giving me those thumbs up. Um, please, if you would, hit me a thumbs up on today's video, even though we're just going to be talking about silver. We're going to be talking about some of the comments that I've received. And we're going to be talking, you know, just about silver and gold, really. Um, so I'm not against gold. You don't see a lot of gold on the table. And there is a reason for that. Um, one, security. Two, um, essentially the value of it is just too high. Uh, it's so expensive for an ounce of gold that essentially I don't have as much gold as I have silver. Um, and so that's why I, I do talk a lot about silver, but I believe in gold on top of that because, I mean, technically gold um, last year did better than the S&P. In fact, if you took gold, let's say you put $100,000 in gold in 2000, you put $100,000 in uh the S&P 500, I mean, you're talking a 5X move versus a 3X move. Um, so gold did phenomenal. A lot of people don't even know that it did better than the Dow Jones. It did better than the S&P 500. Uh, even silver has been phenomenal. Um, now, last year, silver didn't have as great of a year. Um, there's a lot of shorts. In fact, we have more shorts on the market right now, short positions, than ever before. Uh, so basically, that means that people are betting that silver is going to go down. And even in this community, um, I hear a lot of people saying that they think the silver price is going to go down. Personally, I don't think it's going to have no drastic drop. Uh, do I think we could enter a recession? That is 100% possible. But what's happening, you know, we're seeing countries like China essentially using up all those dollars and they've got to buy something tangible with it. So they're trying to buy up not just silver and gold, but they're trying to buy up wheat. I mean, that's why, you know, they've, they use, I can't remember the exact number, but I mean, it's just insane the amount that they're buying. They're buying five times more wheat than they use any given year. So the fact that they're doing that means they are either a trying to get rid of the dollar or B they know that something bad is coming. And here's the thing. A lot of uh, stuff that gets shipped into China, it gets shipped in via the ocean. And, you know, if anything bad was ever to happen between them and maybe Taiwan, you could probably expect to see some sort of a blockade there. And that would be U.S. and allied ships that would blockade that up which means you wouldn't be having tankers getting in there. So maybe they're preparing for something. Maybe they're just dumping the dollar little by little. So with that being said, let's jump in and let's talk about some of the comments that I have received over the past couple days. Um, so the first one being, so if the dollar is backed by gold, what is gold backed by? Um, so that, that one is, is kind of comical to me. Um, because anybody that knows, first of all, the dollar is no longer backed by silver or gold. It literally says it is a debt note, uh, Federal Reserve note. This is an IOU, uh, it, not an IOU for gold, not an IOU for silver, just a, an agreement to pay. It's not backed to anything. In my opinion, this would be like an unsecured loan, almost like credit card debt. So some of you guys have heard uh, if the economy tanks and you know you lose your job and you have no income coming in, what's the first thing you're going to not pay? You're going to not pay your unsecured debt. Why? Because there's nothing that they can do to you aside from ruin your credit. Now, obviously, having good credit is a good thing, in my opinion. I have used credit to buy real estate. I think it's a great tool if you know how to use it properly. 
I'm not going to go out and max out my credit card and buy a bunch of big screen TVs that are flat to the wall, some stupid thing like that. Now, have I used it before? Absolutely. Um, I've bought and remodel, remodeling a house on a credit card. Um, because I wanted to hurry up and get it fixed up, get people in there renting it, and that way I could start generating income. Um, I've even bought precious metals with a credit card. Now, some people will be like, oh, you shouldn't do that because if precious metals go down, you've lost money. That's true, but it's not really true because you didn't lose any money because I don't plan on selling it. I really don't care if this ounce of gold said that it was worth $1,000 or $2,000 or $5,000. It's not that I made money or lost money necessarily. It's that I still got my ounce of gold. In fact, you never really make money on anything until you go to sell it. So that's my thought process on that. Now, as for um, being backed, it's just not backed by anything. It's unsecured debt. See, at least with a house note, you know, you you want to make sure you pay off your house because if you owe on a house note and you stop paying, Uncle Sam, or I shouldn't say Uncle Sam, the bank is going to take it first uh, for back taxes, uh, for, for not paying your loan. But then Uncle Sam might even try to go for it for back taxes. I've seen both of those happen. In fact, in most cities... They do auctions for property that you can pick up really cheap for back taxes. If you've never heard of that, next time you're at your city hall, wherever you live, go in there and ask ask around. Ask different clerks there, hey, if I want to look into buying a house for back taxes, where would I find that information? They'll give you the paperwork. They'll give you the website, whatever the case may be. So, But with this, it's not backed by anything. It's just paper. Now, with this, you don't need this to be backed by anything. Why? Because this is the backing. This is the security. This is the house in the house loan. This is the car in the car loan. This is what people want. Why? Because it has value. Now, some people say, yeah, but if the dollar falls, it's going to be hard to sell because if if the dollar collapses and the dollar is worthless and they'll give you, what, $2,000 an ounce for this? Well, what good is 2,000 worthless dollars if the dollar collapsed? Now, that's true in a way, but here's the thing. You're not going to take worthless dollars for this. And the truth of the matter is, when these become worthless, or I won't say worthless, because worthless is probably inappropriate. Everything has a value. Um, even, Even all these old currencies up here that went to zero, they have a value, but they're pretty low. I mean, a million dollars in Turkish money might be worth maybe a dollar today, if that. I don't even think it's that high. Um, so once you realize that, this actually is how it goes up in value. You know, that, that million dollar note that I just had right there? Uh, how many of these million dollar notes would someone give me for one of these? Well, if people were throwing these in the streets in Turkey when everything went to heck, um, they probably would have given me, somebody would have swept up billions and trillions of these to equal that. Now, do I think this scenario is going to play out with the dollar overnight? Absolutely not. Uh, I always have people say, oh, you people think that, you YouTubers think that silver and gold is going to go to the moon. Define moon. I've never said moon. I mean, I might have said moon, but my opinion of moon, if an ounce of silver goes up to $100, $150, I'm pretty happy. I mean, my $100 investment just went up to five or six, 700 bucks maybe. Uh, so that would be a very happy day for me. Um, so another comment that I hear all the time um, is the only reason that this has value over this is because of its history. I mean, this is only a 2003. This is an 1886. So that's not true either. That's a myth because it doesn't matter if you have this. If you have this, which is the most common buffalo ever made. There's more of these buffalo coins out there than any other silver round in existence. Or even this, a Donald Trump round. You could maybe dislike Donald Trump, but it still has a value of 
The spot value will say $23. Um, all three of these can easily fetch $23 versus this dollar right here, which is paper, is only going to get you a dollar. Now, I will say that on top of that, if you had this or you had this, I mean, this not only has the silver value of the $23, but it also has a historical value. And, and technically, I shouldn't even say it's actually $17 is the melt price of uh, this right here. And the reason that is, is this is not a full ounce of silver. So technically, this has more silver in it than this because this is pure silver. This is 999 fine, as you can see on the bottom. This right here is only 90% silver. But people will pay a lot more because this coin's 150 years old. So to be able to get 30 bucks easy for this, I mean, I'm sure someone out there will leave a comment. I'd give you 30 for it right now. I mean, it's a, a great condition coin, aside from a little toning on the top, which I don't like. And that's the reason this one's sitting here, um, because I don't like toning. Uh, some of y'all know that about me. It's just a little pet peeve of mine. Uh, is it look cool? Yeah, when it starts rainbowing, um, and I've got some that are just incredibly rainbowed all the way around, and the center has nothing. Uh, I'm not a fan of that, personally. Um, I like I like the coin because it's old, but I don't like that it toned that way. So, But the metal itself, it doesn't matter what you do to this metal. It's going to have the metal price. Uh, a good example of that is a coin like this. It's a 1963. Um, it, it has no collectible value, in my opinion. It's beat up a little bit. Um, it's war. Uh, a 63, it's banged up on the edges. I won't say clipped, although, no, I won't say clipped. It's it's beat up. But it has a silver value. This is worth $4 no matter what. It has no historical value. That's why it's worth $4. I mean, if it was a nice walker um, quarter or barber quarter, then it would have some extra value. Um, so that's something else to think about. Uh, these walking liberties, them have a cool value to them. Uh, but these are just some of the comments that we see here on YouTube. That's just ridiculous that people think this stuff and they don't really take the time to understand. And I I'm ashamed to say that I was there at one time. Some of y'all know my backstory and maybe I'll do a video on it and, and tell you all. But I used to be big in the dot com. Uh, I was huge in dot coms. I did computers for the military, and uh, I bet I was not a fan of silver and gold. I had a friend tell me about it. I didn't like it. I liked the dot com sector. I was lucky that I sold all of my dot dot com stocks. Um, so I could buy my first house. I didn't want to owe anybody. Um, so I got out in time and I was happy for that. So we're going to end that video here because I am coming up on my cutoff um, for my camera and I don't want the video to be too long. So I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please take a minute and hit that thumbs up. And if you have a comment, go ahead and put your comment in. Even if it's something that you don't think I would like to hear, I don't mind. Uh, some people like gold better than silver, some the other way around. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.